name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. We appreciate your presence here in the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome everyone. We're hoping, trusting God will bless us and we glorify the dear Savior here at Northside on this Lord's Day. Now, to you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, I most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour. It's coming to you live right from the auditorium here in Athens. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during this hour we can be an inspiration to you. Now, you can get the singing and the message today. I have it on cassette tape, but we'll have it at the conclusion of the service. And the tape number today is 136. If you'd like to have the singing and the message, you write in. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. We'd like to hear from you. This is a faith ministry. We look to you that love the Lord to work with us in getting out the gospel. Now today I'm reading from three different places in the Bible. I'm speaking on the subject, angel food from heaven. Angel food from heaven. I want you to turn to Exodus chapter 16 and then John chapter 6 and Psalms chapter 78. That's Exodus chapter 16, John chapter 6, and Psalms chapter 78. Turn there in your Bible. No doubt there's many of you out in the radio listening audience. You have your Bibles there open. Just turn to these places and follow me in the scriptures. Some time ago, there's a family that had, had a preacher out for Sunday lunch. When they sat down at the table to eat, the little boy said, Mama, I want some goat. She said, son, we don't have any goat. He said, yes, you do, Mama. said, you know, the other day when Daddy told you that the preacher was going to eat with a Sunday, you told him you just about as soon have the old goat at that time as any other. And he wants some goat. So if you're having goat today for lunch, well and good. Give you time to find the place in the Bible. If you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you tune in, each day at 12 o'clock noon, Monday through Saturday, you can get the daily program. And I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate you writing to me. I'm reading, first of all, from the book of Exodus, chapter 16. I begin reading with verse 14. Page 90 in my Bible. I use the original Schofield Reference Bible, the old King James Version. The best Bible in the land today. Verse 14, and when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manner, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather it every man according to his eating. And O my for every man according to the number of your persons, take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more and some less. And when they did met it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no like. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, Let no man leave it till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. And it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses, now turn, will you please, to the Gospel of John, chapter 6. John, chapter 6, for some reading of God's Word there. And I begin reading with verse 47, read through verse 51. It's page 1123. Page 1123, John, chapter 6, verse 50, uh, verse uh, 47, rather. Jesus here is talking to the people, of course. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. 
Now you ought to underscore that verse of scripture. It said, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is a bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I have given to the life for the life of the world. Now that's as far as I'm reading there. Now I want you to turn to one other place. And that in the book of Psalms, chapter 78. Psalm 78, and it's page 637. Page 637, Psalm 78, verses 24 and 25. This is my text. And had rained down manna upon, upon them to eat, and had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels' food, he sent them meat to the full. Now here we find in the book of Psalms where God is calling this manner that sent down from heaven angel food. They ate angel food. He's talking here about the manner that sent down from heaven. Now today as we talk about this manner, I want you to keep in mind that this manner is a type, a very beautiful type of Jesus because he said, I am that bread of life. And he compared himself with the manna sent down from heaven. And there's several things I want to say about this manner in just a moment. But you must remember that God had Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Now there's a lot of those people, more than a million, some believe high as three million. And they were led out of the Egyptian bondage across the Red Sea and into the wilderness. Now they could not plant gardens and do any farming or get enough food to supply their need and what they carried with them could not last very long. Now Moses had to take this step by faith believing that God had make a way for them and so they went into the wilderness and began to get hungry. They'd eaten their food. They were thirsty and hungry and they began to murmur and complain and they said, would to God we'd stayed in the land of Egypt. Over there we had onions and garlands and melons and leeks. We did have some food to eat over there in Egypt. And here we don't have anything to eat. We're just about on starvation. I would to God we'd stayed in the land of Egypt. They were getting about ready to stone Moses. Moses went before God. He said, now Lord, you told me to leave these people out. Here I am in the wilderness, this great mob of people, nothing to eat. Now, God, you'll have to take care of them. We want you to supply their need. And God said, Moses, I'm going to send their food from heaven. Every morning they can go out and gather their food. Now, in this manner, it was a little wafer that tastes somewhat like a wafer flavored with honey. It's very delicious. And in that wafer, they had every vitamin that the people needed for their bodies. God supplied that food. And they had to go out and gather a certain amount. And they had that certain amount to eat. And they had to do that each day until Friday. On Friday, they had to go out and gather twice as much because Saturday was a Sabbath and they could not gather the food on the Sabbath. God did not send it on the Sabbath. And therefore, they had to go and gather it on Friday to take care of Saturday. And then on Sunday, go back again and gather again. Now, God said, you eat every bite that you gather. Don't leave one bite over to the next day. Now, I read in the text there, well, they tried to leave some over for the next day and found it full of worms and it stank. And uh, Moses displeased and God was displeased with that. Now, the matter they picked up on Friday... God preserved that for the next day, the extra portion. That was the hand of God. But all the other, they had to eat it the same day that they gathered that food. As your day is, so shall your strength be. And God will take care of his people day by day. Number one, the manna was a supernatural gift. No man could say, I had a part in this. No man could say, I helped make up that, uh, those wafers. I purchased those wafers. I worked and earned those wafers. They could not. This manna from heaven was a complete gift of God. In Exodus chapter 16 and verse 4, 
Then the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. This was entirely of God. God gave the manna from heaven. And this is the first great lesson which the manna is designed to teach us. And that lesson is, it is a gift from heaven and not from the earth. This manna came down from heaven and not from the earth. Now that's exactly what our gift did, the Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And he came down from heaven, not from the earth, but down from heaven. And he is our manna and he is our gift that God gave us. Number two, the manna came right to where the people were. Now, God didn't say, Moses, you tell the people the manna will fall over on the other side of the woods or back across the hill or back near the river. You tell the people the manna will come right where they are. And each morning when those people arose and walked out of their tents, they saw the manna on the ground out around their tents. And they went out and picked up what they needed. Now, it came right to them. The Bible says in verses 13 and 14, And in the morning the dew lay round about the host, and when the dew that was lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a great round thing as a hoar frost on the ground. Now no long journey had been taken to secure this manner. God Almighty gave it, and there was a great frost on the ground. And then the frost disappeared, and there lay little wafers from underneath where the frost uh, lay upon the ground. God gave it. God brought it right to their doors. Right to where they were. That's exactly what God did with our Savior. Jesus came right where the human race waited for him. Right down to mankind. Came right down to the earth to bring salvation to people. And he came right to the door as it were. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. And so Jesus came to us, right down to us according to the word of God. And we know that to be true. Then we come to thought number three, and that is the manna was small in size. Look at verse 14 of the scripture I read in Exodus. There lay a small round thing, as small as a hoar frost on the ground. It was round. It had no sharp edges. It had no briars or thorns. Nothing to stick you. It was a little round, small wafer. Now this is symbolic of the Word of God which is complete and can serve every purpose and is food for every child of God. That little small wafer lay there for them to come out and pick up. They didn't have to get gloves to go out and pick up this little wafer. They didn't have to get sticks to gather it up. They could go right out and pick it right up as a little small wafer. And in that wafer, God had supplied vitamins, all that they needed for that day. And when the morning came the next morning, they could go back and get more uh, wafers. And there they were provided with what they needed. It was small in size, but it was of great significance. And then we come to thought number four. And that is the manna was white in color. The Bible says in verse 31, And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. It was like coriander seed, white. And the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. So if you wonder what it looked like, it was a little small white wafer. And the Bible said they called it manna. That word manna means what is it? That's the meaning of the word manna. What is it? God tells us it was angel food. God's an angel food. Every day the angels in heaven ate manna. And so it was angel food. And the Bible said it tasted like wafers flavored with honey. It must have been very delicious. I'm sure it was. And they went out day after day. They picked up that little wafer. And they ate it. And they had their strength for today. And they went back the next morning and received the same. Now, later on, they decided that they wanted some meat. They had eaten those wafers day in and day out. And they said, we'd like to have a little something different. We'd like to have some meat to eat. And they began to murmur and complain and told Moses, we want some meat to eat. Moses went before God and said, Lord, 
They are grumbling and complaining now. They're not really satisfied with just the manner. They want some meat. God said, all right, I'll give them meat. And God sent little quail right out of the ocean. Those quail came flying out of the ocean and they would like right in front of their tents. They didn't have to take a gun and go out and shoot them. They didn't have to have a bird dog to find them. Whenever they got up in the morning, there, lo and behold, a quail walking right around their tent door. All they had to do was go out and reach down and get a quail, and they had meat for lunch. And so they had the manna as well as the quail, and God sent them quail, and those quail came right out of the ocean. Some time ago, on my first trip to the Holy Land, we went down into the area of Gazar, down there where Samson did his business, and we came back coming out of the, the area of Gazer, and we stopped beside the road, and there was a covey of the most beautiful quail you ever saw, a big old fat plump quail, as pretty as they could be. And I said to the guide, I said, Sir, are those the kind of quail that God sent out of the sea to feed the Israelites? He said, Well, he didn't think so, but said it could be, but said he really didn't think it was really that kind of quail. And so I still didn't know any more than I did. But somehow I felt like in my mind that that might have been the same kind of quail that God sent out of the sea, out of the, the Mediterranean Sea, and they'd fly right over the tents and there they'd light and they'd go out and pick them up and they'd have quail for lunch as well as manna. So it was white in color. White is an emblem of purity. So the manna being white in color is an emblem of purity. So is our dear Savior. Every word of God is pure, the Bible tells us. God's wonderful word is pure and forever settled in heaven. And the Bible said there is a pure river of the water of life yonder in heaven. So this manna was white in color, symbolizing purity. Then that brings us to thought number five, and that is the manna was to be eaten. Now God didn't say, I want you to gather this manna. And bring it in the tent and bury it or put it away or try to save it to a later date. God said, I want this manna eaten. Bring it into your tents and eat it the very day you bring it in. It was not given just to look at. They could have said, well, we'll place it on the table here in the tent and just take a good look at it. And we'll look at it all day. No, God didn't send the manna just to look at. It was given to appropriate. It was given to meditate. It was given to assimilate. Now they could have looked at that manner all day long. It would not have helped them. Now we have a lot of people today. They have a beautiful Bible in their home. And that Bible is there on the table in the den or someplace. And it's just there. And it's not read. Very seldom do they ever look at it. Very seldom they open up. Rather look at it. It's very beautiful. They say, oh yes, we have a Bible in our home. Wonderful book of God. We're so proud of the old book of God. Well, that Bible in your home is not worth a dime with a hole in it if you don't read it, if you don't look on the inside. Kind of like the preacher one time went to home for lunch and this lady in the church always bragging about how that she read the Bible every day. She said, preacher, I want you to know I never let a day go by without reading my Bible. I read it every day. I love the Word of God, preacher. I'm one of your members that you can count on reading my Bible. The preacher went in to comb his hair to get ready for lunch. And he, after he combed his hair, he took the lady's comb and put it in a Bible. And folded it back together and laid it there on the table. And then a few weeks later, he went back. And so he went in to wash and he looked for the comb. He said, lady, I, I can't, I'd like to have you comb. I want to comb my hair. She said, Preacher, I'm so sorry. I said, I don't know what happened. said, You know, I haven't seen that comb since you were here the last time. Well, beloved, if she'd read a Bible, she'd have found it the next day, wouldn't she? She surely would have. Now, that book is not going to help you unless you read it. Now, God didn't tell them to take that manner in and look at it. You've got to uh, read the Bible, assimilate the Word of God, take it in your heart and soul, meditate upon it. Cogitate on the Word of God until it becomes part of you. If you don't do that, it will do you absolutely no good. So you must read that book. They had to eat that manna. Number six, the manna was gathered daily. The Bible says in verse four, Then said the Lord unto Moses, 
Behold, I'll rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. I want you to go and get the manna every day, God said. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that God wants us to read this book every day. God wants us to meditate in the Bible every day. This book should be read by you every day that God sends in your home. You should never let a day go by without reading a portion of God's Word. If you do, you're neglecting your spiritual strength. Now, had not those Israelites eaten, eaten that manna every day, they would have been weak. And therefore, they could not have continued on and would have become weak Israelites because they failed to eat every day. And the reason God's people are not stronger than what they are spiritually, they don't feed on this book every day. You as a born-again Christian here in this auditorium, and out in the radio listen audience, you should read God's word every day that God sends. You may say, now, Preacher Edwards, I can't read. Or, My eyesight's bad or I never went to school. Get somebody to read it for you. Listen to the preacher on the radio at 12 o'clock. I'll give you what thus says the Lord God. You can get some of the Bible every day if you want to. And that's why that you have the book of God. God wants you to read it. Eat your manner every day. It was gathered daily. Then number seven, the manna was gathered in the morning. Not in the at noon time. Now I didn't say you go out this afternoon and gather up some manna. I want you to go out about 12 o'clock noon and get some manna. He said, I want you to get this manna early in the morning. Verse 13. And in the morning the dew lay round about on the host. Now what is God telling us there? God is sending us a uh, uh, word, word of warning uh, tell, trying to tell us what to do about the Bible. He's trying to tell us we ought to read the Bible early in the morning. That's a time when your mind is rested. Your mind is most clear early in the morning than any other time. And God deserves the very best of your mind. Now you go out every day and you mix and mingle among people you work with, associate with. Your mind gets weary, you get tired. Even though you come in tonight and read a portion of God's Word, it's not going to help you like it would if you read it early every morning. Now, you may say, Preacher, you just don't know what takes place at my house early every morning. We're trying to get off to work and trying to get the children off to school. We're trying to do thus and thus. Have you ever thought about setting the clock and getting up about 15 minutes early and use those 15 minutes especially for devotion and reading the Bible? Have you ever thought about that? giving God just 15 minutes of your time and read the Word of God. Early every morning is the time to read your Bible. I know it's hard sometimes to get the children together at night for a Bible study or a prayer or altar prayer so-called, a family altar. Have you ever thought about it at the breakfast table every morning? If it is so, you can get your children together at the breakfast table. Before you eat one bite, let the head of the house read a portion of God's Word. Let them read a portion of God's Word or let each member of the family read some of God's Word and then offer up a prayer of thanksgiving for the food. Ask God to guide you during the day. It's far better to do that. It's better to build a hedge around the cliffs where you're about to fall off than to put an ambulance down at the bottom to take you to the hospital after you fall off. So why not read the Bible every morning? And you'll be surprised how much of that you can assimilate and it become part of you and give you strength during the day. And so we find it was gathered daily, the Bible tells us, and gathered in the morning. Number eight, the manna was obtained by labor. By labor. They had to go out and pick it up. It wasn't just uh, brought in and put in their laps. And the Bible says in John 6, 27, Labor not for the meat that perish, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life. It fell around the tent, but not in their hands. God didn't say, I want you to hold your hands out and I'll drop you some angel food down there. God said, no, I'm going to put it out there around your tent and you go get it. And so there's certain effort you must put forth in learning of God and serving God and growing strong in the Lord. You can't just say, well, I'm going to dream tonight about knowing more about the Bible. And when I get up in the morning, I'll know more. But no, it doesn't come that way. God expects you to put forth a little effort and learn what you can about the Word of God. 
be active in serving the Lord. Then number nine, the manna was gathered by stooping. By stooping. Now they didn't uh, just reach down and standing up and reach all the way down the ground and get that manna. They had to bend over, uh, get out on their knees in order to get that angel food. They had to go down after it in order to get it. Now it did not grow on trees. God didn't say I'll send you some manna out and it'll grow on the trees out there. And you go out and pick it off the trees. But it fell on the ground and the Israelites had to stoop to get on their knees rather to get it to stoop down to get it. Did you know the way up is down? The way to live is to die. The way to have is to give. Beloved, if you want to go up, then you go down. And the way to go up is to go down. You go down and get the matter and you'll go up spiritually. God will help you. So they had to bend over. They had to get on their knees, which a lot of Christians don't ever do in regard to prayer. Get on your knees. Go down after it and you'll go up according to the Bible. Number 10, some gathered more and some less. Verse 17, and the children of Israel did so and gathered some more and some less. So we find that God Almighty has some of his people that will study more and be more concerned and some will be less concerned. But those who are more concerned and study more and pray more and serve God more faithfully are the ones that will be blessed more and be rewarded greater when they come to the judgment seat of Christ. Number 11, we find what was gathered must be used. Verse 19, let no man leave of it till the morning. Now God wants you to read the Bible and then put it into practice. Use what you know about the Bible. Use the word of God. Tell people about the scriptures and give them what thus saith the Lord and use that book. God wants you to do that. We find this manner here, of course, God gave to his people, and it must be gathered, it must be used, and then the manner, must, manner was despised by the mixed multitude. Now, if you read Numbers chapter 11, that's Numbers chapter 11, verses 4, four through 6, you'll find that there was a mixed multitude that went out of Egypt, that is, part Egyptian, part Israelites, and a mixed multitude went out of Egypt, and they didn't care anything about it. They despised that manner. Now you're not going to get this mixed worldly crowd today to care anything about the Word of God. They are not going to put forth any effort to go to church or bring their Bibles. That mixed multitude have no heart and no appetite for the Word of God. Now you must know the Lord and be saved and be right with God in order to enjoy the Word of God. Then we find the ark was preserved, the manna rather was preserved in the ark. In verse 33, And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot, and put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it before the Lord to be kept for generations. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 4, the manna was placed in a golden pot. And that golden pot was placed there in the tabernacle. And that gold is typical of deity. And the matter is placed in the golden pot. And Jesus Christ is deity. He is very God. He is our matter. And God wants us to partake of him day by day as we feed upon the word of God. He said, I am that bread of life that came down from heaven. And you must accept him, feed upon him, partake of him in order to be ready for heaven. Then finally, the matter lasted until Canaan was reached. You know, 40 years they wandered in the wilderness. But for 40 years, God gave them that manna every day for 40 years. Their shoes didn't wear out. Their clothes didn't wear out. God uh, kept them healthy. And there they ate that manna for 40 years. But in verse 35, And the children of Israel did eat manna 40 years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came under the borders of the land of Canaan. So God's supply is always available. You cannot exhaust the supply of God. God's supply is always ready. And you can never dig to the depths of this word, to, to the bottom of it. You can keep joy from God's well and never run dry. You need from God's word, never consume it all. It'll be for you day by day by day by day as long as you sojourn on the earth. They ate that manna that came to the land of Canaan. When they went into the land of Canaan, they harvest the first crop of the great corn in the land and God stopped sending the manna. But he fed them from Egypt to Canaan. And God wants us to feed up on the manna 
from the time we're saved till we die. Now you take your first manner when you take Christ as your Savior. And then you live forever. You give an eternal life the moment you take Christ as Savior. And then you eat the manner of God's Word from then until you die. Are you going to starve yourself to death? Spiritually speaking, are you going to neglect the Word of God? Are you not going to eat your manner every day? God wants you to. Every day, eat the manner. And if you're not reading the Bible every day, you ought to be ashamed of yourself and ask God to forgive you as a Christian and start reading the book of God every day. And you'll be glad that you did. Thank you for listening well. Let's stand to our feet. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray today that you'll take the message and use it. Thank you, Father, for the manna from heaven that we can feed up on that satisfies our hearts, that makes us strong in the Lord. Thank you for the manna. Thank you for Jesus, the bread of life. And I pray that you speak to every heart in this audience and every heart in the radio listen audience in Christ's master's name. Amen. Now Debbie's going to play for us as she plays her stanza or so or some number. If you're in this building and you need to get saved or come back to God or join the church or rededicate your life for any reason, you feel like you should come forward about, I want you to come while she plays for us. Determine in your mind and heart that you're going to eat your manner every day. Every day God sins, eat some of the manner of God's word. You ought to do it. God wants you to. God required that of the Israelites. God wants you to. You ought to do it. You ought to say, Lord, I'll do it by your help and grace. I'll do it. I'll read a portion of my Bible every day. You'll be glad that you did. I want you to come back tonight and be with us in the service. Looking forward to a good service tonight and come back and we appreciate it. Brother Barrett, you dismiss us in a word of prayer.